Mrs. Talk Techie here and for today's tech tutorial I want to do a quick walkthrough of uh, my Padlet account. I've had it for a couple of years so I've been able to really create and be innovative with how I use it. Now if you're wondering what is a Padlet, think about your bulletin board in your classroom. And the purpose of your bulletin board is to display student work and showcase it, right? So that's what a Padlet is. It, it showcases student work, but virtually. So you submit it uh, virtually by taking a picture or uploading it, however you have it saved. Now, it's about how innovative we can get uh, and actually, you know, the possibilities are endless. It's up to us. And I've learned different ways of using it. And I just want to show you guys. Uh, I know right now I'm speaking to teachers. I know that right now we're at a little bit of a standstill uh, because of the situation that we're in. However, that's not to say that we shouldn't continue to grow professionally and, and, and learn. This is the time when we learn and we've been uh, thrown into this uh, new world of remote learning if we hadn't already been there. Uh, and so it's kind of forced us to to get out of our shell and to if to struggle a little and that's okay because without struggle there's no progress uh but i want to showcase padlet because like i said i've had it for many years and i've used it a lot of different ways so again it's a virtual bulletin board these are all the bulletin boards that i have and i want to show you a couple of them and i have them open up on, on my tabs i want to show you a couple of them and how i've used them throughout the years so I like to have a really organized classroom and that includes my students work. My kids have a binder with a table of contents and every single page and assignment is numbered. That includes uh, uh, activities, that includes foldables, everything is organized. So they do have that three inch binder and I have over a hundred kids. So I have a huge shelf. <laughs> so anyways, um, the, what I started using it for was uh, organizing their work when kids were out when kids lost track of the pages or they just wouldn't organize it where they number the pages I figured what better way but then to create a Padlet and everything is organized here for them so this is just showcasing one of the six weeks and the notes that they need so I have a I have a little uh, milk crate with all the lessons and the activities and they knew that if they were out a certain day then that's page eight and they go get it and they complete it and their binder was nice and organized and they know that they were going to be successful on their binder check. So that's just one way I used it and that's more for teacher productivity. Let's see the next way. In this next Padlet what I did was I took pictures of the kids actual projects. How many of you feel so stressed when you have to take home all of these projects that are bulky and they don't fit one in your backpack or your little carrying cart? Believe me, I broke several of those with all the stuff that I was trying to take home to grade. So I figured why not take a picture of it so that when I'm home, I just get on my phone, my laptop or my iPad, I go to my Padlet and I can grade them digitally. So you'll be able to see your child, your child, your students work there. So isn't that neat? And it's nice and clear. And uh, ideally, of course, we'd have the student's name there, but for uh, privacy purpose, purposes, I, I deleted them. But anyways, this is just another way. Uh, it's still a virtual bulletin board, but think about it to facilitate grading for you, especially on those times that you can't stay after school to grade a hundred projects. This is a great way. You could put the class period and the names of the kids. So here's another way that I use it. And uh, I teach U.S. history, so I gave out little cards and I wanted the kids to identify what uh, type, what category was that political party leader and uh, who was he? Was he a Federalist or a Democratic Republican? So after the children read it and used their notes, they took a picture of it and then placed it in the shelf or category that they felt it belonged. And then we reviewed it. So uh, it's just how innovative can we get when using Padlet? And the kids really enjoyed, uh, enjoyed this uh, activity. Another one, another way that I use Padlet is for teachers as well. Uh, I was part of a tech academy 
and our teachers were learning how to use the MacBook and how to create wallpapers with Keynote. And so I had them submit their, their desktop wallpapers through Padlet and everybody got to see each other's work. So you get to see personalities and things like that. Really nice way of uh, displaying their work. One of my favorite activities was an app smashing activity in, we in which we used multiple apps to create a final product. And so these were our final products and the kids got to draw and um, they, they created little speech bubbles of what Washington would have said. Uh, and then they displayed it and showcased it here and everybody got to see each other's work. So uh, this is another way that we use Padlet. So if you're a teacher who is not able to use Google Classroom or Seesaw or any platform to, for students to submit their work, I would highly recommend to share this out to your parents. I did make a parent video, tutorial video on how to go about doing that. So if you search on my YouTube videos and I'll add, I'll add the link here uh, below on, under the description. But if you search, you'll find it as well. It's called Pad, uh, Padlet for Parents. So take a look at that. But if you're having your kids send pictures to you of their completed work, you're probably probably getting bombarded with work and uh, it's starting to get a little frustrating and a little uh, exhausting trying to um, sift through everybody's work and what if they didn't put their name on it and so on and so forth. I would highly recommend to share out that other video, Padlet for Parents, uh, and so that they can submit, submit it to you this way via Padlet. And all you're going to be doing is once you get the link for each child, you just go in, it's the same link, and the parents are gonna be uploading their work. So take a look at how I did this one for one of my boys. Uh, what I decided to do is do it by weeks. And so this is called the shelf option, and it's week one, and this is all his work for week one, from science to reading to social studies to all his math worksheets. And then we started on week two. And as the weeks progress, I can keep adding more and more weeks. Now, as the teacher, when I get this link, I can add a heart, I can add a comment, I can let them know if they're on the right track or if they need uh, to adjust their, their uh, submission of work, right? So that's just one way. What about for those parents who have more than uh, three children? And the reason why I say this is because Padlet, the free version, only allows you three virtual bulletin boards. Well, that's not a problem. Let me show you how I kind of uh, curtailed that issue, went around it, and this is what I did, because I do have four boys, and I do have triplet eight-year-olds, and this is what I decided to do. Instead of the weeks like this, I did the whole Padlet week one, and I'm gonna share one link to their teacher, to all their teachers. So uh, this is gonna be the same link I'm gonna share to the triplets teacher, and to my five-year-old's teacher. So two teachers are gonna be viewing their work, which is fine, right? And so the second grade teacher will be looking at the triplets work and the pre-K teacher will be looking at my five-year-old's work. But like this, you only get three padlets for free. So I'll do week one, week two, week three. By the time we get to week three, week one should be graded and I can delete it and start working on week four. You also have the option to save the Padlets and they'll be saved as a PDF. And you can do that from your phone as well. So if you ever have a, some like a issue where it's like they didn't get to grade all of them, but you know it was submitted, just save it as a PDF and you'll always have it. So those are just some of the ways that I use it. There were others, but I don't wanna make this super long. Um, the last thing I wanna show you is how easy it is to set up a Padlet. So let's get to that. Okay guys, so we're nearing the end here and we're to the last part. This is the main thing, how to create your first Padlet, your first virtual bulletin board. And it's actually super, super easy. It works the same on your laptop, on your desktop, on your iPhone, Android, iPad, Kindle Fire, any platform, whether it be Android or iOS, it'll work. So that's the best part about it. And what I also love is that there, it's pretty much the same. You don't have to adjust the way it works on your laptop. It'll work the same way under the app on your phone. So take a look at the top left corner. You have a pink plus button 
I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And then I'm going to get to choose how I want the work submitted. So I love to use the shelf feature, but you can always just use the wall where depending on the size of the images or the products that are being submitted, it'll kind of um, Tetris its way and organize itself. So there's all these other ones that you can kind of mess with and navigate through. But for today, I'm going to go ahead and click on shelf, which is my favorite because I'm a little bit OCD and I like things nice and organized. So the very first thing that you're going to find, guys, is that uh, it gives you already by default a background, a wallpaper, a nice cute title with a, a description of the title. And that will always be different every time you create a new Padlet. So if you don't want to have to mess with customizing it, then let, let Padlet do the work. But like you noticed, I did have one with the picture of my boys and I titled it. If you want to do all that and tailor it, then you can, and it's actually super easy. So this is what we're going to do next. Go ahead and look at the right corner here, the title. We can change the title and I'm going to call it my first Padlet. And then uh, notice how cute the, they make it. It says made with the best of intentions. You can add an icon next to your title. I want to do this cute little heart emoji. And then we're going to go ahead and skip on this uh, link, this address, and I'll, I'll touch base on it later. Wallpaper. This is where you get to customize. So if you want a solid color, you want gradient. So now we know it as ombre ladies with our hair, uh, texture and patterns, pictures, or if you want to add your own, like I did with my boys. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you the different pictures that are available. You can choose from all those or search the web and, and put your own on there. It's up to you, especially if you're teaching a certain subject, if it's science and you find something maybe with the water cycle or something like that, it's totally up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and keep the, the cupcakes because those look delicious. You can change the color scheme to white or dark mode, the font as well. So I like this font. The next one is if you're going to be using in the, in the classroom for kids to submit work, if you toggle this one on, then they'll have to put their name who submitted that assignment. So that's really good to, to always have on. The next one is uh, as the assignments are being submitted, do you want to keep the latest ones up front at the top or do you want those to move down as new ones get submitted? It's up to you. Do you want to allow comments? Now, if you allow comments, that means whoever's submitting can also comment on those submissions. And the next one, when it comes to, oh, there's also reactions and I love reactions. Do you want uh, uh, people who are submitting to like the post, vote on it, give it stars, or even give it a grade? You can go ahead and do that as well. And then uh, content filtering, filtering, I'm sorry, is all about moderating what's being submitted. So before it can actually get submitted, you, the teacher, can choose to approve it first. So you would toggle that one on there. Now we're going to click on next. And now we're ready to start posting. So here is my first uh, shelf. So I can call this, um, let's say, uh, metals. And let's say the assignment has to do with science, non-metals. And oh my gosh, I hope I'm doing this right. Metalloids. I hope I typed it right. Uh, and let's say they're submitting something and they have to categorize it. So you can go ahead and do that. Now you're ready to share it out so that students or whoever you want to share this out to can start submitting. What you're going to want to do is look at that top share button. And on this share button, you can choose to invite members so they can collaborate on this Padlet. Uh, you can choose to copy the link and if you copy the link, you can post it anywhere on your school Facebook page. You can post it on an email. You can post it on a text message uh, in your Seesaw classroom, in your class dojo classroom, wherever you want to post it. Just of course, keeping in mind privacy um, um, issues, right? We always have to keep that in mind. The other one is the QR code. And so it generates a QR code. 
And if your kids have devices, they can scan this and it's going to take them directly to this virtual bulletin board. So I love that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of go through the rest really quickly. You can share it through email, Facebook, Twitter. If you have a Google Classroom, this is fairly new. You can tie in your Google Classroom to this uh, Padlet as well. And because, remember I mentioned, you only get three Padlets and that kind of limits you. Well, once you're done with your Padlets, but you don't want to throw them away, right? Delete them forever. You can save them. They can be saved as an image. So if they look really cool, like Tetris, you save it as an image and that's what you're going to get. You can save it as a PDF and it'll scroll as a PDF. So it's up to you, or you can just go ahead and old school it, right? Print it, uh, print it out. So those are all the different ways that you can share it out. I really, really hope you guys like this, teachers. And like I said, I know we're in the remote learning right now, so you feel like, well, I can't use this just yet, but we need to keep growing professionally. And um, I do recommend you sharing this out to your parents. Um, look below for the other link, which is Padlet for Parents, and uh, it will make it so much easier when your parents have to submit their work. And all you have to look at is one link and you see their work uh, that they're submitting throughout the weeks. All right, guys, I really hope you like it. Please like, share, comment, let me know what you think. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so that every time I submit new content, you can get notified. We'll see you guys. Thank you so much.